What's up y'all? So I'm just out here doing some holdover striped bass fishing and I wanted to do something a little bit different today and just show you um, one of the my favorite uh, cadences and retrieve techniques for catching striped bass which is uh, snap jigging and I feel like you know snap jigging is is also probably one of the most versatile ways to catch fish you can use a variety of different jigs and um, just work you know basically the entire water column whether you're using bucktails or paddle tails or you know flukes or jerk shads I feel like you know um, really dialing in the snap jig technique I feel like is is just so deadly for a wide range of species and uh, I thought I'd just take a minute today to show you how I do it um, and yeah it's just really deadly for working you know a, a vast majority of the water column and also different current speeds and uh, vertical or or you know retrieving um, in shallow water. I just feel like it's really deadly and uh, see so yeah, I just want to take a minute let the camera roll out and uh, do just a one take just to show you how effective this technique is. And these are holdover striped bass that I'm going for today. Nothing crazy. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you how I do it and uh, guide you step by step and uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Um, this is easily my favorite technique to catch striped bass for retrieving. I just find it to be so deadly, especially in shallow water um, with uh, like paddle tails or flukes or you know, really any, any kind of bucktail. Um, just found this technique to be so deadly. Um, basically what I do is cast it out depending upon the current direction. Right now the current's moving towards me. So I'm trying to look like a wounded bait fish to these striper. And um, so I'll reel, reel, retrieve, fish on. Um, basically striped bass, they, I'll go back to the retrieve as soon as we land this fish, but striped bass, they've got, you know, seven to eight stripes on them, right? And right over that gill plate is the lateral line and uh, that lateral line is what, wow, this guy is mangled up, man. What happened to you? Oh, what happened to this guy? He is mangled, you see that? Something got to him, I don't know what got to him. I'll let you go. But that lateral line for striped bass, that's a sensory organ. It's kind of like how we have eyes and ears. And uh, just make sure he didn't splash the lens. And they'll use it for finding bait, um, knowing where structure is. And, um, but they can pick up vibrations with it. And uh, the snap jig method um, is a really great way to call in the fish. So. And the pause, a lot of times the bass will hit on the pause, right? Because they'll see an opportunity to strike the, the fish while it has a, they'll follow it the whole time. And then as soon as you give a little bit of pause, they'll come up and grab it. Um, but basically what I'll do is cast out, right now the current's moving towards me. And so I'm trying to look like a wounded bait fish that's flowing in the current. And the striper, a lot of times, they'll be faced in the current, just moving against it. A lot of times on inclines, um, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm on a little bit of an incline and like six feet that drops off to 15 feet. And uh, Basically what I'll do is I'll cast out, this is shallow water, so I'm not giving the jig too much of a drop. That was a bad cast. Um, but, I'll show you. Basically what I'll do is cast out, let the jig drop to the desired depth that I want to get it to. I'm, sh I'm fishing with an eighth ounce jig head, so pretty light. And these fish are in shallow water, so don't need to drop it too much. But 
see that snapping motion basically you want to let your jig imagine you're cracking a whip and uh you want to give it a bit of a cadence like you're calling in the fish right um sitting right on top of the fish right now so you cast out right let it get to your desired depth pop real real pop and i'm using a six to one ratio right now so pretty pretty slow reel fish on and you can see what happened was that fish probably heard my jig drop back there but um, what will happen is you'll retrieve it. The fish will find it. They'll nose up to your, to your jig, right? Second that you give them that pause, that's their opportunity to pounce and strike the bait fish, right? They're always looking for that easy, easy meal. Um, and that vibration of your jig when you're snapping it is going to uh one call them in they're going to feel it on that lateral line but two um it's going to give them an opportunity to grab your jig when you give them that pause so that snap is kind of calling them in from far away and that pause, they're going to nose up to the jig. And once they, they follow it for a while, they're going to wait for that opportunity for the jig to, to pause for a second. And that's where they're going, to, they're going to strike it. And another thing with the snap jig method that I'm doing right now is um, when you retrieve it and they nose up to it, and you create that cadence, that very rhythmic sound to them, it ticks them off so much. Um, they, if they nose up to it and they can't grab it, right? And you pop it again, they're gonna get ticked off and wanna strike it even harder. And you wanna wait for that hook set. Wait until you feel that thump. Don't set the hook immediately. So you're gonna feel them thump on your lure. That's when they grab it, then set the hook. You don't wanna, you wanna give it, it's, it's a, it takes a little bit of practice, but I swear the snap jig method is so unbelievably deadly. You will catch more fish than anglers that are doing top water. You will catch more fish than any other retrieve if once you really dial it in and it's all about that rhythmic cadence and um, if you're in deep water you know you can just reel up drop reel up drop reel up drop uh, suppose you're in like 60 feet of water if you're in three feet of water you can work your jig super quick I'm working at a little bit of a medium speed right now because you know I'm in six to 15 feet of water so I'm working more of like the top water column right now um, and I don't want to get hung up on a rock because there's some steep inclines right where I am right now too um, but as far as direction of your jig, just imagine, you know, you're a wounded bait fish and you're flowing downstream. The striper are gonna position themselves upstream and whether they're on an incline, uh, in a deep pocket or just in the flats, you know, um, calling them in with that snap jig is so deadly see fish on um now i'm really trying to let this video play out in real time i don't know if the lens is dirty are we dirty no we're, we're gucci uh just so you can see how effective this method is you know i'm on a pretty decent bite right now um but i mean this tide is not great this is not a great tide to be doing this and we're on the fish 
Um, but yeah, I just, I really feel like the snap jig method is so deadly once you figure it out. And someone taught it to me, a really, really nice OG taught it to me. And over the past few years, I've really tried to dial it in. And, uh, you know, with the striper, it's, they're, they're predator fish, you know, and, um, they use that lateral line as a, as a sensory organ. And, um, they're, they're looking for that vibration, you know, of, of wounded bait fish. And so that's really like the perspective that you should put your, your, your concentration on is take yourself out of being the angler and put yourself in the perspective of your jig, right? Try to take your your mindset out of being a fisherman, you know, outside of the world and put your 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 POV in in the perspective of your jig and you'll start catching a lot more fish i i promise you um so here we go casting working pretty shallow water now i'm now in like you know six feet retrieve retrieve pop retrieve retrieve pop retrieve retrieve pop retrieve retrieve pop Retrieve, retrieve, pop. I need to put a new paddle tail on. Um, this paddle tail's all jacked up. Oh. But, you know, I really, really do believe in the snap jig. I've tried to explain it on the channel before. Um. I just feel like it's so unbelievably deadly, especially with the soft plastic bite. You know, early on in the season, um, the soft plastic bite, I think, is really, really the way to roll. Uh, and make sure your jig is on pretty straight. I am using a little bit of scent. I feel like sometimes the scent early on in the season makes a big difference. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all about that, that rhythmic cadence with the snap jig process. Um, you want to create a, uh, a cadence to your lure. You know, you don't just want to make it random. You want to, uh, I'm just throwing some super glue on here. I feel like the super glue really does make a big difference. Uh, with your jigs It's all about that cadence So let's go over it again We still rolling yeah, we're still rolling Cast out all right I'm working pretty shallow so I'm not going to let it drop very, very far. I'm probably at about three feet right now. It wasn't a great cast. Pick up the slack. Snap. 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 And we're back. All right, let's do it again. Cast out. Let it get to the desired depth, which is about three feet. I'm now at three feet. Retrieve, snap, snap. And it's about one, it's about two rotations on my reel. Snap, snap, snap. And we're back. And be careful with this, with a really light jig head. If you imagine it's a whip, so you're cracking your whip back, you don't want to pull it out of the water. You'll hit yourself in the face. Snap. Snap. So once you get closer uh, to your boat or your kayak or shore, be aware that your jig, 
you know, could come flying out of the water and just be safe. Maybe wear some glasses. I don't have glasses on, but probably should. Cast out. And snap. And snap. And snap. And you can vary your speed depending upon what the fish want. You know, the fish might want, there we go, fish on. See, he nosed up to it. He nosed up to the jig and then grabbed it. And wait for that bump. You're going to feel a thud. Wait for that thud before you set the hook. You need to let them grab your jig. It's a pretty decent fish. It's got bigger head shakes. Um, but this technique works so unbelievably well for striped bass. There's a lot of different methods you can use for striped bass fishing, but I really believe in the snap jig method. And I'm really trying to let this, this video play out and not edit it too much, but you can see you just got a, a really nice striped bass. See, that's, that's a nice striper. See if we can get another one. Let's go through the retrieve one more time. Cast out, right? All right, I'm trying to get to about three feet right now. That's my desired depth. I'm at about three feet right now. Snap, retrieve, snap, retrieve, snap, retrieve, snap. Imagine you're cracking a whip. You want that slack. That's what's going to give that vibration to your jig. Snap. And uh, the direction of the tide is, is a really big factor as well. The tide's coming towards me right now. So I'm trying to look like a wounded bait fish. Snap, retrieve, snap. And you can change it up. Sometimes you might be retrieving too quick for the bass and you might need to slow it down a bit. So here we go, slower. Two, three, snap. Two, three, snap. Two, three. And I, I kind of picked up like an hour ago that these fish wanted a bit of a, a faster retrieve. So that's what I'm honed in on. But, you know, you might find that they're, the bite's a little off and you've got to work a slower retrieve at them. But that vibration to your jig is it's calling the fish in. Fish on. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> You know, that, that's basically what you're doing. That vibration of that snap, like you're cracking a whip, a whip, is you're calling fish in. It's the same idea as like a topwater spook. So I hope that video made sense to you. I'm a firm believer in the snap jig. I think it just works so unbelievably well for these striped bass. And uh, yeah, go out and catch them up. Thanks for watching. See if we can get one more before I gotta change this plastic out. They're just annihilating this plastic. Snap. Two, three, snap. Fish on. Fish on. So yeah, I just let that video play out. And I think that I caught about four fish, you know, without cutting the camera. And just to kind of show you guys how deadly this technique is, it just works so unbelievably well. And uh, works for all different sizes of striped bass too. Wow, this guy is freaking going crazy. It works for all different sizes of striped bass. I gotta throw a different jig on. And different depths, and whether you're at a jetty, or whether you're at the beach, or whether you know, you're in flats on a boat. It does not matter. You can use the snap jig process and casting retrieve for any of those situations. It's extremely versatile. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video. I've really tried to explain it in other videos, but I felt like the best way to do it was just to have this as all one, one take so you can really see everything in time. And yeah, thanks for watching.
Well, I hope that was helpful to you. Um, you know, that's just how I do it. Um, I do, you know, a reel and a pop method. And, uh, you know, when you're, when you're doing the retrieve, it's, it's, it's kind of like snapping a whip, like cracking a whip, you know, and, and that snap, that's, that's sending a vibration to your jig and you're really calling in the fish when you do that. And yeah, I just wanted to do a quick, quick little video, roll all one take, just to show you how I do this type of uh, retrieve technique. It's definitely my favorite retrieve technique. Sometimes it doesn't always work. You know, if the fish are a little turned off and not in that aggressive state, you might need to work more of a, a slower creep retrieve and do uh, less snaps and pops. But you'll be able to feel out the fish. Um, of how they're reacting and on that given tide or uh, you know moon phase but yeah this is just you know one of my favorite ways to catch striped bass I find it to be extremely fun you know if, when they grab onto the jig um, and you set that hook it's just super fun um, so yeah I hope you enjoyed the video if you like this video please give it a like um, it really helps the channel out a lot maybe subscribe if, if you want to see more of this type of content I'm going to try and do some more instructional type videos uh, throughout the year. And yeah, striped bass fishing is just getting popping off. It's 42 degrees Fahrenheit water temperature right now. So still getting up there to that ideal, you know, pre-spawn um, water temps. But yeah, nice, fun, fun, light tackle uh, jig bite this morning. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. So I'll see you on the next one. Peace.